Jeremiah chapter 8. The street preaching Jeremiah, he's at the temple gate. What would that be to today's church? You're out on the sidewalk at a church. Not on their property. Jeremiah's on the property, outside the property. You're on the sidewalk and you're preaching to the congregation coming in and out. I've done that with the Catholic Church. I've done that with the Jehovah Witnesses. I preached to them. I held signs to them. And they'll come up. Well, it's not Bible. I don't read the Old Testament. And at that time, saith the Lord, they shall bring out the bones of the kings of Judah, the bones of his princes, the bones of the priest and the bones of the prophet and the bones of the inhabitants of Jerusalem out of their graves. Now this is not a resurrection. This is digging up the graves, taking the bones out. This is man doing it. So, I mean, you get in the news every once in a while, you'll have somebody, you know, this construction site, they dug up an ancient burial ground. They, they, they found this cemetery. The Bible says everything source is the Bible. And they shall spread them before the sun. That's who they've been worshipping. Baal. The moon. Asterisk. Mary. Queen of Heaven. Muslims. Do you realize when Abram came out of the Urs of Chaldees, you realize the, the, go, the god of the Ur of the Chaldees was the moon? The crescent moon? And all the hosts of heaven, the stars, comets, everything that's out there, whom they have loved, they love the sun? Oh yeah, there are people get half naked in front of the sun. There are beaches where you get fully naked. And they lay on one side and they roll over the other side. And they'll spend their whole entire mornings, their whole entire afternoons, if not their whole entire day in worship of the sun. And there are churches that will, the sunrise service, which we'll learn later on in Ezekiel, it's wrong. And whom they have served. They are serving these gods. So there has to be some kind of service. There has to be some kind of doing. For the sun, moon, and, and the stars, and the comets, and all that. And after whom they have walked. These are all the aspects what Judah is supposed to be doing. With God, Jehovah. And whom they have sought. Give me the newspaper so I can see my horoscope. So I can see what the stars are. And listen, this is beyond navigational aids. Now, you use the sun, the moon, and the stars for navigation. And let me show you in Genesis chapter 1. There is using... The elements outside the earth and the earth itself. Uh, let me find it real quick. Uh, Genesis 1, verse 14. God said to let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from night. All right, the sun, the moon tells you, hey, it's daytime. It's nighttime. Nothing wrong with that. And let them be for signs. Ships navigation, the stars and all that are, are signs, they're navigations. They say Haley's Comet comes a certain period all the time. They can judge time and the calendar by the sun and the moon. For season. For days and for years. Well, that's the proper way. The sun, moon, and stars. That God had prescribed. Before man was even created. 
God made the sun, the moon, and stars for events, for tracking, for calendars, for time. Uh, Joshua, they had time where Joshua said, you know, let the sun stay still. And then uh, uh, Ahab, let the sun go back 10 degrees. Those are signs. But to what we have here, to love, to serve, to walk, to sought, and whom they have worshipped, verse 2. Well, that last one, there you go. Worship. And I'm telling you, it is Baal, it is Astrid, and listen, you can find on the, on the Catholic altar, you can find that Sunday. You know why they draw Jesus and the apostles with the little ring around their head and they call it a halo? You know what that is? That's the sun disc. That's the mark of Baal. And I know others will say, oh, that's not true. Oh, yes, yes, it is true. When they turn the sun into a deity, and they turn the moon into a deity, and they turn the stars into deities, then you're in trouble. Do you realize every planet in our solar system, except Earth, is named for God? Venus, that was the queen of heaven. Mercury, he's the messenger of the gods. Mars, he's the god of war. And then you go on. You study more. Leo, the lag, the the, uh, the the lion, the 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 Pisces, and the Virgin, and all this. And when they're lined up a certain way, you're going to have a good, happy day. And when they all line up another way, uh, that's what we're talking about. And when we look at the the Queen of Heaven, we're looking at the Moon. And when you find even the, the pictures of the Roman Catholic marriage, she's associated with the moon. Why? Well, you trace her back to all the gods that we studied yesterday. They shall not be gathered, the, the, the people, the bones, nor burned. They shall be dung upon the face of the earth like Jezebel. But Jezebel was literal dumb. She was literal dog poo. They're going to take, listen, the kings were worshiping. God said, hey, take them out of their graves and just leave them on the ground. Don't even give them, they were buried, don't bury them again. And death shall be chosen rather than light. Well, stop there for a minute. That's a tribulation passage. There's coming a time when, when men will be will be smitten by the tails like a scorpion, and they're going to seek death, I think, three or six months, I forget what it is. And they're going to want death, and death is not going to happen. You realize man's going to get his ultimate medical challenge. They will have a day they won't die, and they're going to want to die. There's going to be a day at the end of the seven years, they're going to want to die when they see Jesus Christ, come, but they're not going to die. By all the residue of them that remain of this evil family, Judah, which remain of all the places, whether I have driven them, they're on the run. Right now, in the time of Jeremiah, they're on the run, saith the Lord of hosts. Now, you see that host? It's interesting because we get the answer in verse 2. The sun, the moon, and all the hosts. Of, that Lord of hosts is God of the suns, all the suns. There's more suns than just our sun. All the moons, there's more than one lunar object. All the stars, all the wonderful great pictures we get from Hubble. And we get some great wonderful pictures. That's the only space thing I, I, I look to. When they say God of hosts, that's the host. Everything in God's creation. He's the God of it. And how dare you go and say evolution. Evolution didn't make no host. God did. Moreover, 
Thou shalt say unto them, Judah, the people, Jeremiah speaking, Thus saith the Lord, Shall they fall and not arise? Shall he turn away and not return? I mean, it's somebody falls down flat. Are they going to get up? Are they going to go away? Are they going to come back? Why then is this people of Jerusalem slipping back by a perpetual backslide? There's your, there's where your backsliding came from. It came out of the Old Testament. It's funny how Christians quote the Bible and they don't even know where they're quoting from. Backsliding is I got the perfect illustration is when I lived up in Connecticut and I was driving for the newspaper and I was on the sub base and it was snow. It had been snowing all night long. And I had to go down a little bit of a hill and then make a right hand turn onto a road. And surely I said I can do it. So you make a left hand turn, go down a little bit and then you make a quick right hand turn. So I began to do it. And when that road came up to make the right hand turn, my truck backslid it. And it missed that road and it went halfway down the hill and I got stuck. I did not end up where I wanted to go. I went even further into trouble. Backslid. I went down the hill and I went down the hill. I didn't go backwards, I went sideways, which is worse. I mean, you're in a two way road, but luckily there's no other traffic. You don't want to go down a two-way road sideways, and you don't want to go down a two-way road backwards. <laughs> Slim back with perpetual backsliding. They hold fast deceit. <laughs> they hold on to deceit. Oh, I love the deceit. I love to swindle somebody. I love to lie to somebody. I love to cheat somebody. That's religion. And no particular denomination. That's careers. There are careers known for deceit. Used car salesmen, politicians. They're known for their lives. Not all. Some. Not all. They refuse to return. And that's repentant. They don't want to get right. They, they're going backwards down a hill. And they don't want to put the brakes on. And go forward. And that's where the churches are today. They're going backwards. Wrong direction. And they don't want to stop. They don't want to repent. And they don't want to start going forward. And the churches today. The Baptist churches are going into the Catholic church. Not realizing what the Catholic church has had the history of the Baptists. And. The history of killing and torturing Christians and the Bible believers. They re refuse to return at the preaching of Isaiah, at the preaching of Jeremiah, and at the preaching of other prophets. No, we're not listening to you. And I'm telling you, in six years in Daytona Beach, preaching on the street, I've heard the people say, no, we don't want to hear it. We don't want it. We'll call the police. Will you just shut up? And you come back every week. We don't want it. That's the state America's in today. We are in the state of the churches today. You tell a church, this is right, this is proper. No. We're going to do what our pastor tells us to do. We're going to do by the tradition that we always done it. That's Catholic. We're going to do what the Pope, the priest, and tradition tells us to do. Never mind what the Bible tells us what to do. That's Catholic. That's why I say Baptist Catholic. I hearkened and heard, but they spake not aright. Now, I hearkened and heard. Is that Jeremiah? Is that God? Who is speaking? No man repented him of his wickedness. I mean, that's a statement. It could be either or. Jeremiah's like, yeah, I went, hey, I went to the gate. I preached to the people. 
No one repented. God heard the preaching of Jeremiah and saw the people. No one repented. And there are churches today, their denominations don't even bother repenting. Repenting's not necessary. And then you die and go to hell. Saying, what have I done? I'm a good person. We're good. God wouldn't throw us into hell. What about the heathen that never knew? Well, you know, I couldn't trust in a God. He, he would throw these people who never heard into hell. Yeah, but you see, the problem is you have heard and you want excuse for yourself blaming others. Adam, what happened? Well, you know, she did it. Eve, what happened? Well, you know, the serpent did it. Blame, 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 blame. It's amazing when you look at the study of Moses and the children of Israel. I, I love, the, this is the one story in the Bible I love. The earth opens up and swallows one particular group of people. I mean, everything that has to do with uh, the families, the houses, the tents and everything. And then the earth closes up and doesn't even burn. And the next event is they walk up to Moses and Aaron. You killed them. How did Moses and Aaron do that? It's the blame game. Everyone turned to his own course. What's that? Well, we, we're Catholics. We're Presbyterians. I'm an atheist. I'm an agnostic. I'm an American. Give me Donald Trump. Give me the Democrat. Give me my Baptist church. Give me my, my pastor. There's all kinds of courses. As the horse rushes into battle. And that horse, phew! That horse seems to love the battle like they, whatever they want to do that God doesn't want them to do that the preacher doesn't want them to do, that the prophet don't want them to do, we will run into it. And in reality, the horse doesn't even know what he's doing. That horse had, had you sit those horses down. Well, you know, if you get shot by a bullet, you know it's going to hurt. But, oh. You know that, that bullet could kill you, Mr. Horse? No. Why do you run into battle? I'm excited. You know what runs a lot of the churches today? Excitement, fun. And it's not the course of God. Yay. That's, that's positive. We're talking about a horse, we're talking about a stork. Yea, the stork in the heaven, flying around, knoweth her appointed time. The stork knows when the stork needs to do stork things. I don't know the life of a stork. But evidently, like we read in Genesis 1, the stork knows by the sun, the moon, and the stars that this is the seasons and times that we mate. This is the times and season we go for particular food. The stork knows that. The instinct of the stork. And the turtle, that's a turtle dove, not a turtle with a shell. Turtle dove and the crane, these are all birds. And the swallow. Observe the time of their coming. So there are particular times, there are particular events of God's birds. The navigation and how they do it, and I'm not going to listen to man and science. I'll wait till God tells me in glory how it happened. But God has put into the instinct of these birds, they know, hey, winter's coming. We got to go down south. They don't carry a wristwatch. They don't carry a calendar. They don't have a sextant. They don't have GPS, but they know when and how and where to go. And God's people don't know and don't care. Now, granted, there may be some birds that die because they don't adhere. I don't know. I see animals in the Bible are more faithful than men. My people, Judah, 
know not the judgment of the Lord. They can't see what's around them. And America and the Christians, they can't see COVID-19 is the judgment of God. You can't see. I don't know how many hurricanes came through Florida in the Gulf of Mexico last year, and they're saying it's going to be worse. And they don't see it's God, it's El Nemo, it's gore, it's global warming, but it's anything but God. A, a volcano is going off in, in, in South America. And again, they're talking about Yellowstone's going to blow up and California is going to go into the ocean. They've always been. But if it does, and it did, that's God. Well, and you know, Job chapter 1, it can also be the devil at God's permission. And God used the devil to get Job's permission, uh, attention, excuse me. How do we, ye say, we are wise, and the law of the Lord is with us, and you don't know the judgment. You don't know what's going on around you. You have no idea. That's the Baptist churches today. They're in their carnality. In Romans chapter 8, you know, God cannot work with the carnal. I believe it's Romans 8, 8. And yet they're still continuing to be carnal. They're still involved in their worldly carnal programs and atmosphere. And saying God is with us. And at the judgment seat of Christ, wood, hay, or stubble. Lo, by the way, the law of God, the Lord, the law of the Lord told the Jews, all this that's happening, all this that's going on, is because you have failed God, Deuteronomy. I will get you seven times more for your sins. Lo, certain in vain made he it. The pen of the scribe is in vain. They're calling the word of God, they're calling the law vain, empty, worthless, no value. Now they're, they're, they're calling the word of God, a, and you got again, churches today, you got all kinds of perverted modern Bibles. Because the King James archaic, it's old, it's not up to date. It, it, nothing new under the sun, a certain wise man of God wrote. The wise men are ashamed. The scholars of the church age will be ashamed one day. They are dismayed and taken. Captivity. Lo, they have re rejected the word of the Lord. Shall I say it? That's the churches today. That's America and that's the world today. They outright rejected the word of the Lord. Listen, Christians are losing their freedom. And what wisdom is in them? What, what, what do they know? They don't know nothing. If they say God's word is vain, they don't know nothing that they won't repent. They don't know nothing they're going backwards. They don't even know what direction they're going. Therefore will I give their wives unto others. Divorces. What is the divorce rate of the world? What is the divorce rate among Christians in Baptist churches? And then the wives go off and marry another man. Hollywood is full of divorces. And their fields to them that shall inherit them. They lose their property. Someone else takes their property. The government takes their property. They sue them for the stupid lawsuit and they lose all they have. You know, I, I got me a hot cup of coffee. I put it between my legs and I burnt my crotch. So I'm going to sue you for what money you got. I took some glue and put it in my hair and I'm going to sue you. And it gets me mad. I, I, I see in my buses down here 
You know, they, they got a picture of those yellow buckets that you see in the grocery store. And if you walk in the store and it's been raining and you're slipping full, call us, we'll sue. You know what? I want to see one of them lawyers hit my car. I will get that lawyer that is working with that lawyer to sue that lawyer because I'm supposed to sue. Call Smith and Smith lawyers. Oh, well, Mr. Smith, yes, I, I, I got involved in a automobile accident. I want to sue the party that hit me. Sure, who is it? Your partner, Mr. Smith. I want to take both of you to fully everything you got. And if you won't take my case, I'll call it prejudice. How about that? How about that? There are lawsuits that don't even need to be filed. And then you say you wonder why the court system is so filled up. Nonsense. For everyone from the least, that's the less, that's the guy who doesn't count, doesn't care. He's, you know, he just has a family. He, maybe he's homeless. Even on to the greatest, all the way up to the throne. The one has got the authority, the one's got the fame, the one that's renowned is given to covetousness. I want, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want. And there's not even a really a need to I want, I want, I want, I want. It's because I want, I want, I want. And hey, look at the television set. Oh, look at that. I, when I worked for the for the fast food place I worked for. I was amazed. I, I, I worked third shift, well, second and the third shift, and at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night, I, somebody come up to the drive through Hi, I just saw this on, on TV, and I got to have it. You couldn't wait for that breakfast sandwich in the morning when it's breakfast? I'm going to tell your boss that you said that. I said I would tell people that. Uh, you couldn't wait. One woman, I, I told him, I said, I bet you're in your, your your bathrobe and all that. And she was. I got in a lot of trouble when I worked for them. They, had, they saw it on television. They had to go run out to the nearest store, and they had to get it. And it's so funny because they would open it up, and they look at it. That's it? Yeah, you didn't know that the ketchup on the TV screen was lipstick? You didn't know that that patty was actually a piece of plastic? You didn't know they used hair dryers and all that to make it look like what it did on the television? And then my boss would call me into the office and say, you know, you're not supposed to say those things. I right, listen, man, I'm a preacher. I'm supposed to be preaching the truth. You know? I got to cover it. I got to have. I got to have. I got to have. I am... Paul says to be content. Listen, there's proper company. Lord, I want to witness as many people I can witness. Lord, I want to be used by you. Lord, I want you to be pleased. Those are proper company. From the prophet even unto the priest, everyone dealeth falsely. You mean the man of the word, the man that is supposed to be handled the affairs of God, being God and the people, they're false. Do I need to point to that in the churches today? Do I must tell you that in the Baptist churches, out of the pulpits and out of the podium, there is falseness coming out? Well, we go to a good and great church. You realize there's pastor stories that the pastor gets up there, you know, well, this happened to me, and blah, 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 blah. And I'll be sitting there in the pew saying, I heard that same story when I was in school to get my doctorate. You know, I heard that very same story with the names to be changed to protect the innocent in the church that I was back then. And when the pastor gets up to tell a pastoral story about him that never happened to him, he's falsely reporting. That's a lie. I told you a story the other day. I said, it has been reported to me that there was a preacher involved with this thing. I never met the guy, but I heard it from reliable resources. And then I went and told you a story. It didn't happen to me. It happened to another man. I heard it from another preacher. So if it was true, if it was not true, that's what I heard. You're not going to have me get up and say, this happened to me, and it really happened to somebody else, or it's a preacher boy story. I'm not going to give you false information. 
I just left the church because of false information. For they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly. Say, peace, peace, when there is no peace. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay. That's what a horse said. Nay. Neither were they all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore shall they fall among them that fall. There's that fall. In the time of their visitation, there's a visitation. They shall be cast down, saith the Lord. Go to chapter 6, verse 14. Chapter 6, verse 14, Jeremiah. They have healed the hurt, the door to my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, there is no peace. When they are ashamed, when they had committed abomination, nay, they were not ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore they shall fall among the, them that fall. In the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. Look, that's a verily, verily. Did you catch that? God said that is so important, Jeremiah. Imagine Jeremiah's preaching. Like, I think I said that. Yes, you did. And I told you last time, and we'll, we'll move on real quick, but there is trouble when people can't blush. Why is it you're watching a movie and a television program and you got two people committing adultery, they are not married, and they're smooching, and they're laying in bed lying to you that they're husband and wife, and they don't even blush. When you, when you get these children today, they are murdering other humans. Children. And they don't even blush. I have been in the prison ministry. I have dwelt. I dwelt with a guy who killed his landlord in his driveway. I'm not saying where and when or who. That guy, and that guy would come off to us. He was the greatest Bible scholar ever. You murdered somebody. And then you're going to... What's wrong with you? I will surely consume them. Save the Lord. You're done. You're finished. You're done. And when God consumes you, you're going to hell. Where you'll never be consumed. There shall be no grapes on the vine. Empty vine. No figs on the fig tree. The leaf shall fade. You know, Jesus walked up to a, to a tree and there was no figs. He said, curse to be that tree. At least there was leaves. God's saying, when, when the enemy and, and I am done with you, you're going to be a naked, unproductive vine or tree. And Israel is a type of vineyard and Israel is a type of fig tree. No fruit on them. And Jesus said, wherefore by their fruit you should know them. <laughs> you walk up to a tree or a vine and it has no fruit on it at all. What do you say? Dead. And yet, though a tree be, uh, I, I, I'm not quoting this verse completely, though a tree be dead, a little bit of, of the root touches the ground and gets a little bit of water, the water left, it shall spring back to life again. This is Jesus Christ. And the doings that I have given them shall pass away from them. Now, God's not finished with Israel. He never is finished with Israel. But the people of Jeremiah's time, forget it. And there will be a raiment that goes to Babylon. And few, very few of them are going to make it back in Ezra and Nehemiah. Though some will be back. Because in Ezra and Nehemiah, they say, you know, there are some that rejoice happily. Here's the temple. And there's some here, they're crying. Why are you crying? Because we remember what the temple looked like. See, God's not finished with them. But all the vile, wicked sinners of, of Judah, you're gone, you're finished, you're done. And you'll die, you'll know, wake up in hell. And they're in hell today. Why do we sit still? Assemble yourself and let us enter into the defense city. Does that sound familiar again? Let us run to an armored city. Let's get the tanks. Let's get the army. Let's get the air force. Let's get the bazookas. Let's get the submarine. Let's get our missiles. Let's build our military. Let us be silent there. 
For the Lord our God has put us to silence and given us water of Gael. They're not looking now for an offense here. They're going into bomb shelters. <laughs> They're running underground. Shh, don't say nothing. Maybe the enemy will pass by us. And that happened in World War Two. There'll be when the SS came to a neighborhood, man, they would. And I, 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 someone told me a story. Here it goes. I, I don't know what the story is, but you probably heard it. That the SS came to one of the houses, and they took the blood of a, a of an animal, and they shed that animal, and they took the blood and they poured it out under the door frame. And when the SS troops came, they saw the blood and they said, oh, "Job's done in this house. Let's move to the next." one. They'll hear us. And I've had people do that when we go on door to door. It'll keep them. Maybe they'll stop knocking and go. Don't say a word. I think they're turning around and leaving. Don't get Stiley upset. Maybe if you don't get him upset, maybe he won't say nothing. Stiley, you need to stop posting on Facebook. You're upset in this church, Stiley. People want to sin. Will you be quiet? Yes, I've had preachers tell me, you need to stop your Facebook. Because the Lord's coming. And we're hiding from the Lord. <laughs> really? <laughs> like God can't see you. Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place. Behold the evil and the good. God sees you. Because we have sinned against the Lord. That's the wrong repenting. They are acknowledging their sin because the Lord is coming. And at the end of the tribulation period, they know their idols. They know their images. They are casting them to the owls and they're casting them to the moles and to the rats because they see the Son of Man coming. We know it's a sin. We look for peace, but no good came. For time of hell and behold trouble. Listen, you may have licked COVID-19 with your pharmacies and your shots. But I guarantee the next time, you're not going to lick it so quick. And then if there is a next time, you're not going to lick it so quick when you don't give God the glory and give God the honor. And the worst is going to get, and the worst is going to get, and the worst is going to get until the church is raptured out. And then you're going to get the Antichrist and you ain't going to do nothing to override him. The only way the Antichrist is going to be overridden is by the seven year end of the tribulation period when Jesus Christ comes. And if you're an enemy of God, an enemy of the Jews, you don't want Jesus Christ to come. You're a goat nation and you're heading to hell. After you're stomped on by the horse of Jesus. Right, look for health, we got trouble. The, the, the scorpion will bite the people in the in the millennia, I mean in the tribulation period, and they're going to run to the hospital. You ain't got the mark, ain't going to get no service, and even if you had the mark, you ain't going to get no service because they can't do nothing. There's coming a time of pain in the world that your pharmacies and your doctors and your government can't help you. Tell Satan, thank you, Satan, for not helping us. Thank you, Satan, for no love. Thank you, Satan, for no care. Thank you, Satan, for these creatures biting us. There's coming a time. There's coming a time. You're not going to override what God does. I don't know how worse it's going to get before the rapture come, but it's going to get worse because people in the churches and the Christians are not turning to God and not giving God the credit. How do you know? We're studying Jeremiah. They don't turn to God. They don't give God the credit. We want the queen of heaven. You say, what's that have to do with the Baptist churches? I told you yesterday, Esther, Easter is the queen of heaven. And the Baptist churches run to her. The snorting of the horses was heard from Dan. That's north of Israel. The whole land is trembled. At the sound of the name of the strong one. Here comes an army. And they got a lot of horses. 
for they are come and devour the land, fruits, vegetables, water, people, animals, livestock. All your oxen will be steak dinners for the enemy. Your wives will be ravished, your men killed, and all that is in it, the land, the city, and those that dwell therein, the army will take. For behold, I will send serpents, cockatrices among you, snakes, and the devil. I'm going to send serpents and snakes and vipers. God said it, which will not be charmed, and they shall bite you, saith the Lord. Uh, venom, venom. People are going to die of snake bites. When I would comfort myself against sorrow, my heart is faint in me. Behold, the voice of the cry of the daughter of my people. Because of them that dwell in the far country, uh, Babylon. It's not the Lord Zion. It's not the Lord in Zion. No. Because the temple will be destroyed. The Lord is in Zion. He's in the most holy place. But he won't be when that place is destroyed. And the ark is taken and taken to heaven. I had a foolish preacher tell me, maybe they melted it down for gold. David's best friend, I forget his name, uh, Uzzah, touched the ark because the ark stumbled. And God said, you're fly. Do you know what happened before Uzzah was struck down when he touched the ark because the ox? I think the people of Bethshemesh, I think it's Bethshemesh, you know, when the Philistines sent the ark on the new car, God said he killed over tens or a hundred thousands of them. Because they looked into the ark. They didn't touch it. They looked. And you think that God's going to have them melt it down? By the way, where's the mercy seat? That they were able to look into the ark. The mercy seat was gone before the ark was gone. Tell Indiana Jones he needs to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to get saved if he wants to find the ark of the covenant. Because it's not in Germany. It's in heaven. You don't need original uh, Greek for that one either. Why have they provoked me to anger with their graven image? No, that's in the Catholic. The age of worship provokes the Lord to anger. And we, in Sunday school today at church, we talked about those that hate God by having images of worship. They say aids to worship. And God says, thou shalt not make no images, thou shalt make no idols. Then he says in verse 5 of chapter 20, for worship, for worship, they were allowed to make cherubim curtains for the tabernacle. Read it. And palm trees. Solomon decorated the, 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 the temple he made with palm trees. But they were not the object of worship. You can make samplers of Bible verses if you don't worship what Baptist today is going to worship the scriptures. You can make an automobile as long as you don't worship it. And the Catholics call it aids to worship. They have promoted me to anger with their graven images and their strange vanities. Their weird emptiness. Their weird religion. The things they do that has no value and nothing of God. But to them, they do it. The harvest is past. Summer is ended. And we are not saved. Oh, wait a minute. They were worshiping the sun, the moon, the stars, which we read in Genesis 1 were for the seasons, for the times. But they were gods. They were the horoscope. And when you come to the end of the chapter and end of all of it, they're going back to what the sun, the moon, and the stars were originally for. Not for gods, not for worship, not for idolatry, seasons and we've gone too far into worshiping false gods and we're not saved 
For the hurt of the daughter of my people am I hurt. God is not happy. God is not pleased with having to put judgment upon people. It is not God that throws man into hell. It is man that rejects God's gift at that time of the dispensation. When they reject and rebel against God, they throw themselves into a hell. When man today in the church age, and a man gets up and says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Nope, don't want anything to do it. Why don't you shut up? I got my religion, whatever. That man dies and wakes up in hell. God didn't put him there. That man rejecting Jesus Christ put himself in hell because the Bible says God's not willing that any should perish. God done all he could for a man to be saved. And if you're not saved and you go or are in hell, it is your fault and not God's fault. I am black. Astonishment has taken hold of me. Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no medicine? Is there no physician there? Physician? Well, you know, you ought not to see a doctor. God, is there no doctor here? Jeremiah, is there no doctor? Can we go to a doctor? It ain't going to help you. Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? Sin. Not acknowledging God. Backslidden. Not repenting. Not giving God the glory. Continuing in your sin. Continuing in going against God. We close the chapter there. We close the chapter. It's not good. It's not going to get even gooder. I heard someone say the word gooder. So someone else used the word gooder today. I can use the word gooder. My thing is to you, if you are involved in a sin, I'm involved with sin. The Bible says, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I go to God and I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. Don't get happy in your sin. Don't get away from God in your sin. Don't get comfortable in your sin. 